stagnant and stagnancy leads to decay my name is ritwik raj and we welcome you to the first ever episode of my cast the official mycon podcast as we embark on this new journey we will try to touch upon a lot of things starting from myca and taking it to the world of marketing roping in participants from various cohorts like faculties industry professionals alumni and not to forget the students currently at myca and today for the first ever episode we couldn't have had a better guest Let's together welcome the respected director of Myca Dr. Shailendra Raj Mehta who will help us understand what does Myca actually stand for and understand his views of the world of marketing welcome sir good to be here so uh, before we get into you know uh, talking about this serious business let's talk about what your opinion is and about what truly defines Myca so if i were to put it in one sentence maika jaisa koi nahi hai so and there's a reason for it see maika is the only institute in the world the only management institute which combines creativity and management definitely and it's not just a tagline for us mm-hmm. right because as you know you you've taken that exam to get into maika uh, everybody has to take our mycat exam and the maika or maika entry maika admission test mycat uh that focuses on identifying creativity yes empathy uh group work and uh and emotional uh, intelligence yes, so as a result the students that come into myca are unique hmm. so they obviously have analytical abilities which we test for also but they also hmm. have synthetic abilities the creativity part Yes. And so it is this combination of analytical abilities and creativity that I think defines Myca. And believe it or not, there are many institutes in the world that focus on different things. Uh there are institutes that focus on or management schools that focus on entrepreneurship, others which focus on finance, some yeah. which focus on uh, human resources, yeah. others focus on public management. Yes, yes. but you will never come across any other institution that focuses on creativity, creativity and management definitely. and in today's world in today's world yeah where uh, everything is going the artificial intelligence and machine learning way yeah when you remove all the drudge work that is out there what remains it's the creative work it's the creative work definitely so myka <clears throat> belongs to the future agreed agreed so you know you talk you touched upon a very important point which is you know if there is ai and if there is everything else which uh, you know provides a uh, learning through machines and understanding every day about new things on their their own selves so basically machine learning is, is is a field which learns on itself and by experience so do we see in the future that uh, you know even creativity can in one way or the other could be automated or will it be something that uh, you know uh, we won't be able to touch through machines and it will be human driven more or less so you raise a very interesting issue yeah. uh, there are uh, computers that make music yeah. there are computers that um, paint paintings uh, all that has been done yeah uh, i imagine some more of it will be done yeah but at the end of the day they still do not get to the essence of human creativity these and you know what they are doing mm-hmm. is really at the very low end of the creativity scale mm-hmm. in fact not too many people uh, look twice at those uh, at those products Definitely. so therefore i would not worry about it so much Definitely. at this point yeah on the other hand true innovations true creativity true emotional expression yes i think how one creates experiences using emotions yes Uh, i think that is something that is becoming extremely important in today's world the experience economy right it's yes, not the product yes. or the services economy agreed it's the experience economy and so it is in that connection that i think all these skills creativity and management come in agreed agreed totally so now uh, you know we we have talked about the, uh, the the things which are unique to my car and one thing which is very unique to my car are the different types of courses that are offered inside yes. this campus and the way the students interact with all of those courses it's not just one course that you are enrolled in that you interact with you interact with different kinds of courses whether it be you know the creative course that we are off uh, we offer for specific students whether it be a uh, pgdm core course that we offer to specific students or whether it be the fpm course that we offer for specific yes. students you know we can 
uh, and there is a holistic learning which happens so can you you know talk about a little about that and how it differentiates micans in the industry so as you know we have three programs here at my yeah. uh, our flagship program the one which has the largest enrollment 450 plus students over the two years is our postgraduate diploma in management yes. right pgdm or p and p uh, so uh, there uh, the focus is on management mm-hmm. and creativity mm-hmm. then we have the ccc program where we have it's a one year program yeah. as opposed to the two year program that i just described mm. ccc only has 48 students we take only 48 every year and that focus is on pure creativity the management element is is there but it's not as pronounced as it would be in the pgp program yeah. and then the third program is the fpm program mm-hmm. which is our the equivalent of our doctoral program and there the emphasis is of course on creating new knowledge and there uh, our uh, students can focus on one of two areas marketing and branding mm-hmm. and uh, communication is the other area now uh, while these courses may look different but there's a lot of cross fertilization in the sense that we take a lot of the creative elements from ccc and we embed them into our pgdm program yeah. Yeah. similarly many of our star management professors those who teach marketing and branding among other things come in and teach our ccc students crafting creative communication uh so there is very much of cross fertilization mm-hmm. and the same uh, process is also applied into the fpm program so there also we bring in these creative elements so for example uh, you know this uh, you you've been through it we have a, a flagship creativity program called abcd anybody can draw yes right yes. because at the end of the day if you're going to be creative uh, being able to use uh, drawing uh, and uh, art uh, as a creative tool even if you're in management i think it's a huge huge game yeah, changer yeah. the quality of your presentations the quality of your communication yeah. uh, the quality of your expression the way in which you are emotionally able to connect i think that goes to a different level so if if i may <coughs> let me take a minute to walk you through the history of how this happened sure sure absolutely and uh, mica is uh, as one may say an evolutionary uh, institution yeah. why do i say that is because mica has come a long way mm-hmm. in the last uh, 28 odd years that we've been in existence. So as you know, Mica was set up in 1991. Yes. We are a child of liberalization. Yes. We were set up at the same time that the Indian economy was being Oh yes, that uh, was being liberalized. Yeah. All the creative potential of India was being unleashed, so to speak. Yes. And in came Mica. Mm. Now, Mica originally was set up to cater to the advertising industry which was then going through an explosive phase mm. as kind of the industry that was going hand in hand with the liberalization of india right yeah, yeah. uh so as the range of products and services was expanding the need to tell the whole world about this expanding range of products and services just skyrocketed so some visionary individuals came together under the um, uh guidance of j krishnamurthy mm. our founder yeah. uh so he basically was the person who had uh, founded Uh, the mudra company the first indian advertising agency and he realized that there was a huge need for trained professionals so the long and the short of it is he got some of the most interesting and innovative thinkers in education together okay and they bought this piece piece of land and okay. they decided to set up this institution so mica has been in existence for 28 years yeah uh we have graduated uh, 24 batches so far yes this yes. next march march 2020 yeah we we'll graduate our silver jubilee or 25th batch yes now what is interesting is that the first batch was entirely focused on advertising mm-hmm. but as micans made their way into the world and mm-hmm. into the corporate sector mm-hmm. and into advertising the corporate sector realized that they had skills that went far beyond advertising yeah so gradually many of them were pulled into related areas mm-hmm. such as branding mm-hmm. and marketing mm-hmm. and even sales so very quickly micron started to move in these areas mm-hmm. and then again over the last 10 15 years as digital and data yeah and ai and ml have started to come in micron's have pivoted one more time and today they go into uh, digital companies they go into companies that focus on data they focus on company the uh, companies that focus on design yes 
So all of these things are basically yes. happening. So why do I mention this? I mention this because Micah has pivoted with its students. So yes. as Micah's students yes. moved from advertising to marketing and branding, so did we. Yes. yes. As Micah's students moved from marketing and branding to digital and data, so did we. So Micah has pivoted. So much so that today uh, we have a whole new set of programs that were not even there earlier. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, which basically cater to these pivots. And I'm pretty sure that MICA will continue to evolve. And Definitely. I think that is what makes MICA special. Definitely. And I think it's, it's inherent to MICAs as well that, you know, when they go into the corporate world, it's always said and we have been told by, you know, even uh, by our faculties that the way that it is easier for a MICAN to switch industries, it has not been so easier for other people to switch industries. Right. Because the kind of holistic learning that we go through, you know, learning about advertising, media, and brand management, and uh, data analytics, and everything together creates our experience of becoming a MICAN. And that's why our expertise not just stays in one single domain. And that's why our switching, you know, becomes easier, whether we are in, you know, marketing analytics and we suddenly we wish to do a little bit of sales. And it's it's not been difficult at all. And I think that says a little bit about, you know, Micah's curriculum and culture. So I'll, I'll completely agree with you. And let me give you some perspective on, on why that is the case. To be flexible you have to be able to look at things very differently, mm -hmm. right? The name of the game in creativity mm -hmm. or doing things differently or evolving or adapting yeah. or moving is you pick up a whole different way of looking at things. Now, this skill, this high-level skill yeah. of taking a fresh approach to something that is very familiar or that may be new, yeah. I think is unique to my car. How do we inculcate that? Yes. So we have, I already mentioned, anybody can draw. Yes. So you look at the world very differently. Yes. Can you make a sketch of the world without lifting your pencil from the sketchbook? It's a very interesting exercise and yeah. leads to a very interesting point of view. Secondly, we have courses such as Imagining India. Each one of us has grown up with his or her own version of India. India, definitely, yes. Which is only a small part of India as a whole. For example... I grew up in the north, right? Maybe occasionally <laughs> I ate idli dosa, as they said. <laughs> but I, I had never really had Gujarati cuisine before. I had never really had Marathi cuisine before. Yeah. I had never really had Bengali cuisine before. Yeah. All of those cuisines are equally representative of India. Yes, yes. So the point is that in this course, not just cuisine, but we ask you to completely reconceptualize what India means to you. We have another course, for example, which is semiotics, you know, mm -hmm. which is how do you think about symbols Definitely. and the symbolism all around you. Yes. And you basically uh, come up with a whole new meaning. Remember, experiences come from meaning. Yes. And meaning is heavily dependent on symbols that you use for communication. Yes. Symbols that explode with energy mm -hmm. and with emotion. I think that is when meaning comes in. So almost from their ground up, mm -hmm. we train Mykons to be completely agile yes. and ambidextrous when it comes to reconceptualizing and then doing things in a different way. Wow, that's that's one way to put it. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, our top management sees it that way. And we are glad that we get to learn in such a curriculum that we get so many different perspectives. And, uh, you know, in the one and a half years that I've been here, I think the kind of subjects that I've learned here, I don't think so I would have been exposed yes. to such subjects anywhere else across the world, for the matter of fact, not just India. So, uh, yeah, obviously that sensitizes us in a very different way. So now that we have uh, understood about how India's perspective helps us uh, define our own career paths in the future, can you bring in a little bit of your perspective from the uh, foreign countries that you have been yeah. a part of and foreign universities that you've been a part of? You've been a part of some amazing universities from Harvard, Oxford, to even I am Ahmedabad, which is our next right. door neighbor. So, you know, what... What do you think that MICA either lacks or excels at in comparison to all these premier institutes all across the globe? Well, for one thing, MICA is very young. Yes, right? definitely. Uh, given the fact that our first batch was graduated only 24 years ago, yeah. if you think about it, they are just hitting their mid-career, right? Mm -hmm. Let us say today people have easily a 40 or 45-year career. Yeah. Um, if you are just about hitting your 25-year mark, and this is, mind you, the first batch, mm -hmm. the people who have graduated still have a long way to go. Yes. So in some sense, one full cycle has not even been 
uh, uh, complete. Agreed. And even before that cycle has been complete, Micah has pivoted at least twice. <laughs> and we will pivot even more. And by the way, these students who graduated uh, in years past, yes. they have done phenomenally well. In fact, today you cannot go into any uh, corporate, uh, any major corporate in the country in advertising or media or branding where you do not have a Micah in a senior position. Definitely. Oftentimes agree. in the CEO's role. Yes, agree. And they still have another 20, 25 years ahead of them. <coughs> so you can only imagine <laughs> that uh, now this process will start to happen on a global scale. Yes. And this, uh, there are already quite a few Micahns who are in some of the leading digital companies in, uh, around the world yeah. in leading positions. Um, I don't want to name names of either individuals or companies here. They're all there on our website. Yeah. But um, but that is that is something that is that is happening. So what it does is that it brings very different flavor mm -hmm. uh, to Micah yeah. as compared to the other institutions. Yes. Agreed. So you know now that we understand that while compared to global institutes, Micah is not exactly lagging or excelling. We are just too young to be compared. But, no, but but I will still do so. Uh -huh. So let me let me, let me uh, complete that thought. Sure. So. Uh, a university like Oxford, right? Yeah. 800 years old. Yeah, definitely. A university like Harvard, mm -hmm. um, almost 400 years old. So uh, these universities obviously have a lot of history behind them. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of weight behind them in mm -hmm. terms of accomplishment of their faculty and of their students. Yes. We being young are not quite there yet. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we don't have the ingredients uh, for greatness. Mm -hmm. So let me talk a little bit about that. Now, what made these institutions, uh, such as Oxford or Harvard, and I was fortunate to be a student in both, mm -hmm. and then I had a chance to teach in some very fine institutions in the United States and be part of them, uh, institutions such as Purdue and Duke, wow. and then um, here in India, with Ahmedabad. Yeah. So the thing that ties all of these uh, five institutions, and then a sixth one where I taught, um, uh, which was Gizma, mm -hmm. uh, the first business school set up in Germany in Hanover, wow which is also one of the leading business schools in Europe. So between these six, six institutions, uh, the thing that uh, stands out is the quality of thought and the quality of inquiry. So the ability to not take anything for granted, mm -hmm. to challenge everything and to accept things. <coughs> if you want, do accept them, but yeah. only after you've rigorously examined them. So basically, it's that quality of thought that makes for a great institution. Yes. And that is very much true of my cup. Uh, for the reasons that I mentioned. I'll tell you the thing where we have some distance to go mm -hmm. as compared to these other institutions, yeah. partly because India is still an emerging economy. It is not so easy for foreign students to come and study oh, here because yes. placement then becomes an issue. Yes. But over the next few years, as that becomes possible for foreign students to become students at MICA and then most importantly for them to be placed in Indian yes. companies, yeah. uh, then I think a whole new dimension will be added to MICA. Agreed. As you know, MICA is very diverse, yes. gender diverse in the yes. sense that 50% of our students and uh, about that percentage of our faculty are women. Yes, yes. Uh, but also we are very very diverse in terms of all the states of India where Definitely. people come from. Definitely. No state in India dominates MICA, Definitely. certainly not Gujarat, certainly <laughs> not any of our neighboring states. Yes. But the diversity that is missing is global diversity. Yes. And that is something that I'm sure over time will also come. Definitely. I agree with you. And that is, I think, something which which is the need of the hour for the Indian subcontinent sure. in all in all, yes. I think. Because, uh, you know, we have been so busy with our own cultures, with our own markets that we have kind of lost a little bit of perspective over the global view of things. And that's where I, I think we need to open our perspectives and realize that it's no more just the Indian subcontinent. It's a globalized yes. economy that we need to focus on. Not just economy, the culture as well. So very well put, sir. And now we'll, you know, go into a little depth of how the, you know, how marketing is seen, not just in India, but also globally and in terms of research, most mostly. Right. right. So we'll talk about, uh, so you talked that global perspective is something and the, the, the need to inquire, the need to reason is something which is uh, at a very different scale in universities like, you know, Oxford or even at IIM Ahmedabad. Right. So uh, how does MICA fare or how does even India fare in terms of uh, research capabilities and uh, where does marketing research stand in India currently and where does MICA stand at the cusp of it? So the answer is not very well. 
and okay. that is one of the unfinished uh, stories of indian academia and this is not just of management institutions like mm-hmm. ourselves yes but of higher education institutions in general all right that is to say we have not done a very good job mm-hmm. of creating the new knowledge we have done a reasonable job of transmitting the existing knowledge yes yes but we have not done a very good job of creating that new knowledge mm-hmm. so therefore it is extremely important for us mm-hmm. to do that because if we unless we do that we will not basically figure in the global rankings yes. i think that is going to be extremely extremely important mm-hmm. so uh, and today uh, if you want to play in the big leagues if you want to be ranked nationally if you want to be ranked globally one of the most important metrics if not the most important metric is your research outlook and your research productivity so let me share a few things that uh, we've accomplished at mica sure that we are very very proud of sure sure all the iims are trying to move up the research line as are we but i think we have done it much faster than most of them and the way in which we've done it is quite interesting first of all within the, we 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 started this big push on research about 2 years ago just slightly after a few months after i came right. uh, to my car mm-hmm. the at that point hardly anybody published in even the mid- middle tier journals in the world okay in marketing mm-hmm. or related areas so we basically made a big push we by which i mean we took our faculty en masse okay to visit with and to uh, embed themselves in some of the top research institutions in the world all right i personally went with them mm-hmm. for a couple of iterations we took them to the united states we took, took them to china mm-hmm. took them to europe wow. so all that uh we did number 1 number 2 then we gave them the resources we said any project that you need to accomplish we will get you the resources for right. data collaborators mm-hmm. time all of that basically became available so uh so that was number 1 secondly we yeah. built partnerships yeah what we did there is we tied we basically identified universities and within universities some of the top most scholars in marketing and related areas in the world and we got them engaged with mica they came saw what we were doing mm-hmm. they liked our sincerity they liked our efforts they liked the resources that we put um, are behind all of this and then they decided to help us mentor our faculty wow so as a result a couple of dozen of our faculty are now working very actively with their counterparts in some of the leading universities in the world So what it does is that it immediately takes them up on the research ladder. Uh they collaborate. Mm-hmm. So you know as the old saying goes you divide the cost and multiply the fun. You know yeah. if you uh if you basically uh, collaborate with other people. Yes, yes. Uh you make it so much easier to produce great work and if the person has done it before the if your partner has done it before that that person can take you along. Yes. yes. Because you learn and you contribute you contribute and you learn. and uh, that makes for a wonderful uh, wonderful experience so yes. as a result would you believe within 2 years this is normally a journey that takes somewhere between 5 to 10 years within 2 okay. years we have several mica faculty who've published in absolutely the top tier journals in the world the wow. top 5 journals in the world wow. not in india not in the region but in the world wow and there are several mica faculty who have done it not just one or two and any university or any institution of higher learning would be proud if even one inst- individual out of a large number did so mm-hmm. we have several individuals out of a very small faculty wow. we have only 33 faculty members yes, yes out of that still many are producing at the topmost levels so wow. i'm very very proud of that accomplishment beautiful beautiful so i think uh, mica is on the right track and i think they will we will lead you know india's research uh, capabilities soon Certainly in the area of marketing, marketing. branding, design, Ooh. digital data, Beautiful. we absolutely want to own this niche. Beautiful. Initially in India, mm-hmm. but increasingly worldwide. Worldwide. Especially when you bring in creativity and mix. Wow, amazing. So, you know, now we have uh, talked a lot about different aspects that my guys connected to. Now we would like to hear, you know, your vision as to what do you expect of the students? that you know our present micans our future micans and our ex micans and how do you place them you know in the in the in the future of mica that you see as to where do they come and uh, you know how are they going to contribute see i want mica to be the place where all passions the everything that people are passionate about yes all that is unleashed 
when you are passionate about something creativity flows okay. when you are passionate about something hard work flows agree okay. when you are passionate about something collaboration happens mm. when you are passionate about something connection with the outside world happens yes, yes right because yes. people are attracted to that quality yes which you know very well you've been here the moment you walk into the mica campus yeah. it's palpable yes, yes it's not just that we have peacocks here and monkeys <laughs> and perhaps the most interesting collection of birds agreed. that you can find anywhere agreed uh an occasional snake or two uh which adds to the charm and lots of frogs yeah but uh but be that as it may when you walk in you feel a certain palpable energy and i want mica to be a place where people come and be passionate about expressing themselves yeah whether in whether it is in terms of research in terms of teaching mm. in terms of consulting yeah. in terms of any number of things that we do on a daily basis so that is what i expect of mica and micans and i want all our faculty all our staff all our students to wake up in the morning mm-hmm. and say wow another day what am i going to do today that is going to be new and fresh and exciting i want everybody to come in uh, to work at mica or play at mica <laughs> with that kind of and and you know the and and when you have that passion work and play becomes synonymous agreed agreed so that is that is what i expect but let me give you but that is kind of at the level of feeling but let mm. me now share a little bit of what uh, i uh, think we can do at the level of uh, accomplishment mm. so first of all i want us to be very very collegial one of the things that i've tried to do is break hierarchies mm. i encourage our faculty i encourage our staff yeah I think it's a little bit of a distant dream now <coughs> for the students but I encourage everybody to call me by my first name. Uh and it is not that I'm bringing in some kind of unthinking americanism here. Uh it is there with one purpose and one purpose only which is that you should be able to challenge my ideas and that I want to be very collegial about this either I convince you or you convince me. Yeah. But until we do that we don't get out of the room. Yeah. and uh and then once we do then we are aligned and then we can move forward would you believe that uh in my nearly 3 years here uh i have hardly ever imposed in fact i don't remember a single time when i have imposed a decision on anybody it's always something that emerges by consensus occasionally there has been a lack of consensus and then am i may put in the uh putting the uh, casting vote but people people very quickly come around and uh, and the fact and i have never told anybody what to do it's just not my style to tell my faculty or for that matter even the students what to do we say these are the things that need to be done yes let's find a way to do them most efficiently so uh so creating that kind of space mm-hmm. where creativity naturally flows yeah and uh, passion naturally gets expressed that is what so now so that is about the current micans mm-hmm. what about uh, micans past yeah So as you know we have about 2000 alumni it's still yeah. relatively small yeah uh, compared to some of the big universities in the world which have hundreds of thousands of alumni so what do we expect first of all we uh, bind them very closely with mica mica as you know in hindi means mother's place yes. alma mater loving mother as it goes in latin yeah so it's very appropriate uh, and our alumni association is also called maa so the tagline is ma bula rahi hai you know so yes. so mica so first of all we want to bind all the alumni with mica mm-hmm. but it's not just that you know come here for old time sake uh-huh. but we also want remember as i said micans are only hitting their stride yes. at this point yes. so we want to on a continuing basis give micans who graduated earlier continuing education in a very interesting way in kind of a peer learning way oh, so we are okay. in the process of setting up groups of uh, micans who have similar vintages you know those who graduated 15 years ago yeah those who graduated 20 years ago those yeah. who graduated graduated 10 years ago yeah they all have similar challenges and similar agreed uh similar things that they want to discuss agreed so we are in the process of creating groups oh. and discussion groups around them of alumni so we so they talk about what is of interest to them how are they navigating the challenges in some cases wow. marriage in some cases um work life balance work life balance or you know becoming a a a cxo for the first time how do you deal with that or you even become a ceo you know so what then do you need to do so that is when we do peer counseling and then also some continuing education programs yeah off by and for micans um where we try some of our most innovative ideas mm-hmm. and once they are successful then we bring them into our broader management development programs and then then into the classroom wow and that's actually very exciting and good to know 
you'll be bene- you'll be a beneficiary once you graduate <laughs> yeah, definitely and i'm looking forward to it because that is something that i think um, every entry level uh, you know professional needs yes. to have which is a little bit of guidance from their own alumni who have been there and i think mica creates that uh, collaborative culture where no alumni feels they are above their own peers actually they you know micans they they may be 10 years senior to them but still they will come down and they'll help yes you know everybody and anybody who comes and asks for help Yep. they've never said you know it's 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 very given fact that micans never say no to another true. mican so true and that is i think that is the you know hidden insight that uh, you know this entire program will be based on and i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to all the guidance so now that we have talked about your vision and uh, you know uh, what while we are we have talked about your vision for the present micans and for the ex micans what do you exactly expect of the future micans that are going to come in this very year within the next 6 months well we want to create more and more innovative things for them so as you know uh with you folks yeah. the current micans we have introduced so many new innovations yeah. so the latest one being the urban impact project right yeah. so let me talk a little bit about that yeah one of the things that i realized and this is from my own experience mm-hmm. i i was an academic all the way through right yeah. uh it was only in my 10th year of teaching 10 years after doing my phd that yeah. i realized that i didn't have uh, skills to run a center for example or run a company right. even though i was talking about running companies but i had right. never really run a company so people acquire this in different ways of course mm-hmm. they get it a little bit when they graduate mm-hmm. but then there are many things that they miss out on mm-hmm. because they have not been exposed to those so the urban impact project has the students working under the supervision of a professor on a three course module right six credits so right. 2 plus 2 plus 2 uh six credits where they uh work uh with a company on a real life project where it's not just a consulting report that they uh, that they provide but they provide but they actually have to implement it and measure the impact and communicate it back to the client and get the signature uh, okay. on that mm-hmm. so think about it you ideate yes. you conceptualize yes. you prepare a report you agree on a implementation plan you implement the plan you measure the impact and then wow. you communicate the impact wow think about the kinds of skills that you would need and this is by the way done over a 6 month period and so the kinds of projects that uh, that the students are working on mm-hmm. of course they are working on many many digital marketing campaigns right yes. so we have a, a, a very innovative school yeah. so how do you communicate to the rest of the world exactly what they are doing but then we have some other fun projects one project that where i am the client i have given them that project this is one of the 27 projects oh, okay. uh, that they are working on okay i've said make mica a zero waste <coughs> campus a zero waste campus okay which means no plastic no waste paper yes everything has to be recycled can we also make it 100% solar in terms of our energy all right uh can we recycle all our kitchen waste mm mm-hmm. and can we basically become a sustainable campus so they're working on a on a project like that wow and they came to my office just this morning just mm-hmm. a few hours ago mm-hmm. and they were struggling with three choices okay about how to completely change the energy architecture of mica option a was basically go with what we have you know mm-hmm. which is buy power from the grid mm-hmm. option 2 was set up our own power uh a uh, set up our own solar plant mm-hmm. and own it wow the third option is set up our solar plant but it's owned by somebody else and leased to us so they're going through an exercise okay that they will go through several times in their lives especially as they become senior definitely and become cxos definitely make or buy decision right yes yes and then within the make decision you can make in multiple ways so now they are doing calculations and projecting things over the next 20 25 years and by the way this is only one small part mm-hmm. of their whole holistic approach imagine the kind of conversation starter that this would be imagine the kind of resume builder that this would be imagine the kind of skills that they are building Definitely. that would be of such interest to recruiters Definitely. so therefore uh, i mean this is uh, this is these are just some of the examples uh and there are many many of these so these are the kinds of things that we are driving yeah uh you also know that we have so many other wonderful projects like yes. our rural immersion yes. yes which completely reorients your thinking we have an international immersion so between rural urban and international we have a trifecta three layer sandwich yeah 
you know, of three kinds of immersions. Yes. And yes. Uh, that is again unique to Micah. Yep. So all these are things that we are preparing for future Micahs. Definitely. And uh, I think future Micahs who are listening to us right now would be excited to come and experiment with everything that you just talked about. And uh, there is anyway a lot of room for experimentation at Micah. And that is something that I think starts from day one when we start with the photo novel exercise. Yes, yes. And uh, that is, I think, the first step when we start with experimentation with the, our ideology and thought processes of how we see content is created in outside world and how we create content through a photo novel experience are is completely different. Yeah. And I think that's the first stage that we, you know, uh, imbibe experimentation through. And, uh, you know, it's just, it just goes up from there on. And uh, I think the future Megans would be excited to, you know, come ahead and try everything in together. So, you know, now that we have talked about everything, let's, uh, you know, end this with something that is personal to you. Something which you sure. tag as your favorite Micah moment. Oh, gosh. I could talk about so many favorite Micah, Micah moments. Wow. <laughs> If uh, you were to talk about a specific moment, mm -hmm. the time a few, uh, about four months ago, mm -hmm. uh, when our professor, one of our professors excitedly came into my office All right. and said, I just have a Financial Times 50 publication. Remember, there are wow. only 50 management journals Yes. out of tens of thousands that are there in the world Yes. that are in the Financial Times 50 list. Wow to have cracked it and there are only four or five in marketing right yes so there are only four or five journals in the fields that we work in uh, that are uh, relevant to us mm -hmm. that are in that list for one of our faculty members to have cracked it I mean that felt so liberating that is to say you completely defy naysayers who said that you know it's impossible to do it sitting in India it's impossible <laughs> to do it sitting here in Micah <laughs> that happens once that happens twice that happens multiple times so those are very special moments. That's number one. Similarly, on the student side, Michaels, as you know, win competitions left, right, and oh, center. Definitely. This is something, right? So, <laughs> so when somebody comes excitedly into my office and says, "Sir, we've just won, you know, the Samsung competition or the Colgate competition or the yeah. Nestle competition," yeah. by the way, all of which we won. We have know. won all those. So, won, yes. so I think that is very, very special. Uh, the other special moments I had one of the top um, professors of digital transformation in the world. Mm -hmm. from the United States. He had come into my office just a few days ago. And he said, you know, there's something so different about Micah. He said, <laughs> I go all over the world. I'm invited all over the world to share my expertise. But I have never, never found an institution like Micah where there was so much of receptivity amongst the faculty and amongst the students because he worked with our students as well. And he said the amount of receptivity that he said just blew him away. Wow. And... Uh, the fact that you're open to new experiences, the fact that you're open to collaboration, the mm -hmm. fact that you don't believe that you know everything, the fact that you bring passion to the table yes. uh, and, a, and, a, and an ability to think differently, I think that sets it apart. And then if I can uh, close with uh, a very personal accomplishment. As Definitely. you know, I'm a dog lover. Yeah. So we have two Mica dogs, two resident dogs, beagles, right? Yes. So Faf and Forzo, yeah. who are my favorites. And yeah. uh, as you know, if uh, any time of the day or night, yeah. they are available yeah. all the time, 24 yeah. by 7. Yeah. If anybody is feeling stressed, all they have to do is walk across the lot, open the door, stroke uh, Forzo a Faf, yeah. and immediately calm down. Go back to work or go back to sleep or whatever. Definitely. And uh, they, believe me, um, it's not just our human uh, denizens that I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of Forzo and Faf. I'm very proud of all the peacocks that come and dance in front of my office. I'm very proud of all the monkeys that come and sit on my ledge and look inside, press the nose on the glass from the outside and say, hey man, I'm outside, you're inside. And it feels very nice. Beautiful. So that is the, that is the Micah that I love. Beautiful, beautiful. And I think we have had this conversation with a lot of industry professionals as well. You know, Micahs, yeah. non-Micahs and yeah. 
uh, we had uh, the CEO of Jaguar recently and the VP of Denso recently and yeah. all of those people talked about the same thing you know when the thing that you talked about you know the faculty coming to my car and talking about there's a different kind of energy that is inherent to yeah. my car and you feel that it's palpable it's it's closing Correct. in on you on different directions and every industry professional who comes from you know different parts of the country talks yeah. about the same thing like you know they talk about professionalism and being you know on the mark all the time at iams at mica they talk about empathy and they talk about you know connecting with the consumer yeah. and they talk about your own experiences yeah and i think that is something which talks a lot about what mica signifies as a culture as a community thank you sir thank you for your amazing time thank you for talking to us and i think i am one of those privileged students who has had the time to talk to you for such a long time you know being in my second year and everything given all the workload that i have had we have had and you know given the workload that you have had it's it's very rare that we get such a you know chance to talk to you and get your perspective on our own lives as well as the lives of you know mica so thank you for your time No no it's a pleasure uh it's absolutely a pleasure you know because the if i may use two words from hindi and urdu yeah. the jazba and the josh that yeah. you see at, at at and the junoon which yes. is the third word yes that you see at mica is really quite exceptional and that just keeps me charged and yeah. going every day amazing amazing thank you. amazing thank you so much sir thank you